You know, I, I think what Domi Shi throwing, throwing red is as big as a miracle as like, you know, Jamal Sims and the Rise of the Sense 3 figuring out how to make Dr. Phil Cellier nice. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, inter and, you know, I just, I, li I like the way that Domi Shi, I just, you know, I, I love Domi Shi because she found a way to, I love Domi Shi because she found a way to make a much more innocent version of the QE storyline where instead of, uh, where instead of the instead of the instead of the four main turning red girls uh, wearing revealing outfits and entering a, a dance contest where they twerk, they you know their idea of womanhood is to uh, you know they, they is to uh, you know what is to go see a boy band while they're they're still f fully clothed. Yeah. And plus the plus the plus turning red crafted a much better mother daughter conflict between. Maylin and her mom Ming for three reasons. One, Maylin is a much more innocent and sympathetic girl than Ami, who cared about helping her mom when she was down and hurt. Uh, two, uh, Ming Li has an additional comedic uh, edge to her character that Ami's mom didn't have, where Ming Li is also seen as the antagonist for wanting to keep Maylin out of sexual situations. But that conflict works much better in Turing Red because, the, because Ming Li is misunderstanding what Maylin is thinking about Devin and the Fort Town band as uh, sexual situations that they're clearly not. And the third reason is uh, that. Abby, Miriam, Priya, and Stacy were much better were much much better friends to Malin than uh, what Angelica, Kumba, Jessica, and Yasmin were to Mommy. And uh, after Malin attacked uh, Tyler's birthday party, you know she uh, you know you know she had the conscience that Ami didn't have, where she she feared for herself turning into a monster. She didn't want to hurt anyone with her and. Uh, yeah, they had that avert thing in the show. It wasn't too avert. They didn't have that avert element. Um, you know, I mean, they actually they didn't have this avert like actual monster. You know, like, like the red panda equivalent. I think to show you, make it really obvious and concrete. Such me most about cuties and 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 Velma and why Miss Anthropony called my winner to quote mini killing grotesque is in different ways. You know, they both had eight. They they both had eighteen months to. They, they both had eighteen months of research, of research and experience to figure out how to how to make their story right, and they blew it. You know, my moon to cool research. You know, you know, had girls tell her this. Had you know, other girls facing hypersexualization tell her their their stories for eighteen months and. And, and uh, Mindy Kaling, when she was playing Val Little for 18 months in Monsters at Work. You know, Monsters at Work was greenlit, you know, about 18 months before Velma. You know, Mindy Kaling had all that time and ex experience playing Val Little to teach her how she, how she could have uh, stayed true, how she could have been careful with Velma's character and stayed true to her, and she blew it. She blew it. She wasted a perfectly good Val Little performance by not using it, by not applying the same cheery acting skills for Velma Dinkley. Well, she clearly didn't have the same cheery personality in mind for Velma, right? Well, that's a problem. She can't. That's, this she didn't want to do the same exact thing, right? Well, uh, well, even if she was true to Velma, more true to Velma than his character, she could have done that without making it the exact same thing, the same exact thing as yeah. Val Little. Yeah, I don't think her vision of Velma didn't fit what most people watching Scooby Doo growing up had. So. And it's also and and Velma showcased to me exactly what the problem is with. Embodying all the same cliches you're making fun of, which is why it is, is which is why I dis, it is also the same thing I dislike about the Gumball episodes, the job in the finale when they're making fun of themselves and they're still using the cliches, the bad, they're still using the same bad rank cliches they're trying to mock. It's hard to get out of it, away from that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I know you're, cons I know you, I know you, I know, look, I, I know you are, are uh, Look, I know since I know you have a problem with you know you know misanthropony is a guy criticizing cuties, telling us why cuties ain't cute. But if you but if you want but if you want to look for a black female YouTube channel who makes the same point about why we shouldn't defend cuties, someone with the same background is my mother Dukun Fatia Yusuf, who is who makes the same points in a much shorter period of time. I would recommend that you you check out Ali Redeemed. Okay. About why it's not a good idea to defend cuties. You know, and, All right. And uh, now, back to the subject of uh, turning red. You know the the 
the good version of cuties, family, family, kid friendly cuties. Yeah. Mom, do you think there's anything cute about Mila and her friends? Do you think they're cuties? Yeah, they're they're cute, relatable, likable. Sure, they they showed a lot of them. They showed enough of them for us to see what kind of people they are and to relate to them and to root for them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my mother just sort of just made a documentary out of the girls she was interviewing for 18 months. Instead, yeah, she gave in, so. instead she gave us the biggest. Uh, the biggest failure of a feminist film to grace Netflix ever since the fourth season of Bojack Horseman had that unwatch had that unwatchable mistaken movie in it. Oh, it's so harsh, Adam. I mean, this woman was making a movie about her own childhood as well, right? She's taking this something that's happening now with the dance and her own childhood of negotiating between two cultures. Yeah. So that she's trying to do. I mean, what she's trying to do was. A good thing. It just didn't turn out maybe as well as you would have liked, I guess. And a lot of people, not all, a lot, a lot of people criticize it. But she was what her 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 intent was. Her intent came from a good place. Well, Cuties has a large has a large bridge to pat a large broken bridge to patch between intention and execution. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry it turned out that way. Well, yeah. Miss Anthony Point Alley Redeem can both tell you more about it when we're done filming this video. Yeah, but like you said, I mean, Turning Red uh, does a better job of showing the culture of origin and the larger culture yeah. you've been transplanted into. Yeah, well, well yeah. And, uh, you know, the, yeah, yeah, uh, well, you know, since, since the original Turning Red film takes place in eighth grade and focuses mainly on, like, you know, Maylin and her relationships with her family, you know, Maylin and her relationships with her parents, mostly her, her mother. I think Turning Red could really use a prequel where it gets to learn more about Maylin's friends, you know. I'd like to see a prequel where, you know, that takes place from the, in the summer and fall of, you know, Turning Red takes place in the spring of 1990, uh, Turning Red takes place in the spring of 2002, so I really, I would really like to see a prequel that takes place in summer and fall and winter and partial winter of, of 1999, you know, you know, the Y2K is coming up. Where, you know, we, we get to see, you know, in the summer between between fifth grade and sixth grade, you know, I, I think it would be nice if Tommy Shi made it, if Tommy Shi gave us like you know, an origin story about how Mail and Lee. Yeah, what about the story where they go back to China and she gets to know more about her um, ancestors, her mother's ancestors? Oh, yeah, that would be a terrific sequel, especially if we get to see our cousins, Lee and And uh, do you, do you, uh, when, when you saw Malin's friends in Turning Red, the original Turning Red film, do you wish you could know more about them? Sure. Oh, me too. Then we, you know, then we could know why why Ming Lee dislikes Miriam more than Malin's other friends, mm -hmm. and 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 how you feel about that other added element of you know Stacy being one of the five Turning Red cuties who became more distant with them b before the before it, it, you know in, in two years that passed between the prequel and the original film. Right, right. So she was part of the group back in the at the summer camp. And she away got another group. Yeah, she did. Yeah. But you know that that also makes her OMG moments layers in hindsight where you know she she hasn't seen Mei Lin for almost two years but then she's and and you know she's uh and uh, you know she's uh, surprised and shocked to see me living again as a big red panda. Yeah. So what do you see, um, Do you think Tommy she shouldn't wait too long to make a prequel about Malin's friends if she wants to? You know, like the origin of Michael Slimming Monster know, yeah. University. 
No, yeah, um, I wish, she, yes, I agree. Now she might have other projects she wants to do, but she does want to do prequel or sequel. Yeah, I hope she does that soon. Well, that's why, well, that's why I said her prequel well, and sequel, uh, those prequel and sequel ideas should be her next projects after whatever non string word film she's making now. Right, what she's doing now was set in motion before the Turning yeah. Red came out. But yeah, sure. Or after Turning Red came out. Or after, yeah. Or the moment anyway came out. <laughs> but she's obviously not sitting around doing after. nothing. She's working on it. Yeah. Killing is still going to play Val Little again in the second season of Monsters at Work, or do you think Velma has caused her has caused uh, Minnie Killing to get enough hate for the casting department of Monsters at Work to to get Kelly to get the original choice Kelly Marie Tran back to play Val Little after after Ryan Last Dragon and the, the Crude's family tree? I guess it depends how uh, well she thinks she gets along with them and whether Kelly Tran's available. Kelly Marie Tran's available. Yeah. Right? Well, it wouldn't surprise me if they... If, well, oh, and if she has a contract, right? If she has a contract to continue, that she'd have to have uh, tripped oh, yeah. one of the clauses that would allow them to break it, yeah. right? Well, well, sadly, it wouldn't surprise me if Disney had... If Disney Animation and had... If Disney and Pixar... If Disney Animation and Pixar Animation had to recast Mindy Killing a third time after she didn't... Re for, for this, after she wasn't available for the, the Wreck-It Ralph sequel, and... And uh, she and Bill Hader weren't given a big enough return salary compared to Amy Poehler for the Inside yeah. Out sequel. Well, she did a fine job as Val Little, so just on the basis of her part, of her job as Val Little, there's no reason to not have her unless she's not available. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's kind of nice how Val Little is almost the same color as Velma's sweater. You ever notice uh, that? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Coincidence. So. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you're a dumb machine, you would wait for someone to be a good friend, and your friends like Mike, like Mike Wazowski. Well, that there's support for the film in budget, you know? Well, if Tommy she and her storyboard artist who plays Abby, Hyen Park, watch this video, I hope they uh, take our ideas into account for what could be a good prequel and sequel to Turning Red that could also focus on on, uh, on uh, different characters, you know, besides the main Yeah, I'd love to see this. So would I. Did you know that Dakari Fraser from the, who played Ami's uh, little brother from the English dub? Gosh, how about that? Gwen Stacy and Stacy Frick. Uh, yeah. Willie San Filippo got to play two blonde girls named Stacy. Cool. And one last question for you, Mom. Do, yes. Do you think? Uh, do you think uh, Domi Shi has? The, do you think Domi Shi, as a Chinese Canadian American, has the power to uh, has, has the power to uh, show Disney and other Hollywood studios why they must not and how they can avoid? Pandering to the Chinese Communist Party I think they and reaching a compromise with the with their uh, China with their China distributors, where they don't need to censor their films. Yeah, I think she uh, showed a good solution: how you make a film that neither offends nor panders. 